You said what? Every strategy I give you and engage you with law enforcement is non-verbal. In other words, you do not have to lip box with the police in order to do what I tell you to do and keep your, your, your rights intact. Case in point, I teach you how to keep the police from back illegally searching your house and car. I have strategies, I have developed strategies to do that and it does not involve you refusing the police's orders or, refu or, <clears throat> or refusing to cooperate with law enforcement. You're not going to have to say anything. All you have to do is just do what I tell you. The things that I tell you are not illegal. It is not my intent to teach people how to be better criminals. What it is is to teach individuals to have a fair and level playing field when they when they when their case is adjudicated. If you have uh, an illegal search issue in your in, involving your case, you will be able to properly articulate that to whomever is um, 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 the fact finder or the, 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 the person uh, making the decision. It, it, it's very, very simple. I'll give you a, a brief example of what I'm speaking of. A lot of times, our young people have house parties. And some of our elders who live around them call the police because of the noise. Well, a lot of times those uh, encounters are used as pretexts to enter the home illegally. Because they know So, this, is a, this has become a very easy way to arrest our children because when they come about the nuisance complaint, they usually just enter the home. And according to the Constitution of the United States, there, are, there is only two ways you can be searched, with your consent or with a warrant. And since they were called their own nuisance complaint, they don't have a warrant. So they'll, they'll so it'll be, if they, they will use the consent prong to do it, to, to, to enter your home. And what, and what will happen is when they go to court, they will say that you gave them permission whether you did or not. Now, you have, as, a, as, as, a, as an African American, very little credibility in a court of law. So it does not matter whether you're a law-abiding or an or, or, or unlawful citizen. You have no credibility in the criminal justice system. We have witnessed atrocities by white uh, citizens in our neighborhoods, and 15 of us come to court and say he did it, and he denies, he, and just him denies the fact that he did it, and the court sides with him or believes him, 15 to 1. Fifteen brothers ain't worth uh, uh, the the account of fifteen. The testimony of fifteen brothers is not worth that of one white uh, person's testimony. And since we know that paradigm to be true, we have had the I've had I've, I've came up with with with, with, with uh, a strategy to uh, ensure that you will be believed if you go to court. Case in point, most of us, when we, when we hear that knock at the door, we don't, in our community, we go look out the peephole and we don't, and we look out the window. We don't just go open the door. So, you're at an advantage. 
you know who he is, and he doesn't know who you are. So we use the things at our disposal. I teach our client, I teach my people to go to the door and step outside, turn the bottom lock, close the door. Now 